For this road trip adventure, I'll be driving westward across the continental United States from Michigan to Idaho, and then head north to the coast of the Pacific Northwest. The final destination is Valdez, Alaska, a town that I have called home for many summers, yet have never driven to from my home state of Michigan. The map here shows the eight stops I plan to make across four adjacent regions. Within each stop, there is one site visit designated to the physical characteristics of the location and one site that touches more on the cultural characteristics. As the Google map shows, there is over 5,000 miles of driving ahead and 91 hours of travel without considering the stops. Clearly this will be a long week of driving, so let's get started. The first region on the list is the Great Lakes and Corn Belt. I have grown up in this region but haven't spent much time in most of the states that it encompasses. The region is characterized physically by landscape features that originated with a fairly recent glacial past. Low rolling hills, many lakes and streams, and a flat farmland are very common. Culturally, there is a lingering tie to automotive and steel industries while highways and railways still crisscross over the land. The Great Lakes region is home to many farmers and folks with ancestors from similar lands back in Europe, like Germany, who settled in familiar territory centuries ago. Manistique, Michigan is the first stop here. The Fayette Historical Town site displays the history of forts and pocket settlements along the lakefront that were vital to maintaining connectivity in the region. The Palms Book State Park is a beautiful reserve where the pure Michigan image of clear waters holds true. Second stop on the Corn Belt is Minneapolis, Minnesota. And what better way to take in the middle of the United States than seeing the Mall of America? That place captures the intense bond between American image and the consumerism, while also being impressive by the sheer size of the building. Inversely, Minnehaha Falls is more of a pocket of natural areas surrounded by urban development. The park is centered on a river, which goes to show the legacy of water-based settlement in the region, has left a mark on the modern times. Heading further west still, the next region on the road trip is the Great Plains. I will be stopping in each of the Dakotas, first in Fargo, North Dakota, where the city is also located on a waterway, but on a river that has recently been a hazard for large floods. This is a side effect of climate change and will only continue to harass the people of the plains who live on flat, vulnerable lands. On a brighter note, the Fargo Theater downtown is a classic movie the theater that frequently hosts cultural events to locals and visitors. These films are a common thread for many American regions. Heading down to South Dakota, Rapid City is the place to be. Close by is the Borglum Historical Center, with many artifacts relating to the settlement of the region and the legacy of Native American culture in the area. Slightly further away is the Black Hills State Park, neighboring its namesake university. This area stands out like a sore thumb in the region because it's anything but flat, yet still remains the cultural influences despite physical differences. Alrighty, now we're halfway through the trip. Next stop, the Rocky Mountains. Maker of the rain shadow of the plains and formidable challenger to past settlers. This region is rugged and full of beautiful sites that retain the same challenges faced by travelers of the past, even in the modern age. Yellowstone is a must-see on this road trip. On one side, the unsettling past of native relocation and assimilation can be seen in the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. This museum is part of a large conglomeration of cultural institutes where life in the West is presented based on a large body of research. One can only hope that they do justice to the native cultures they exhibit. After the museum is the park itself, with Lamar Valley being a highlight. Large herds of bison and even wolves traverse this valley throughout the year, and visitors can witness them easily from the road. After visiting with family and friends in the city of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, I'll stop by the Red Horse Ranch to gain some experience in traversing the landscape via horse and learn what it's like to ranch in today's economy. Tubbs Hill is going to be a nice, easy hike over the town with a great view of the lake from the top. Natural areas like this hill are part of the draw for upper to middle class families to settle in the Rockies even when they don't rely on the region's resources financially. Last but not least, the Pacific Northwest region marks the final leg of the road trip, and it's a long leg at that. Mountains, ocean life, and forests make this region very attractive to the younger generations of Americans, if they can afford the high cost of living. In Vancouver, I'll head over to the Audane Art Museum to take in a wide assortment of native artwork. This will be interesting to contrast with the Plains and Rocky Mountain cultural centers, because in many common histories, the coastal nations are left out of the discussion. Being some of the last peoples to meet colonizers, I am curious how this transition into modern times is different. As for the sea life, I can think of no better way than a boat trip to explore the coastline. I have never been disappointed by a whale-watching trip, and I'm sure the Salish Sea will be no exception. At last, Valdez, end of the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline, home to dozens of fishermen, and marred by a history of devastating natural and oily disasters. It will be like coming home to return to the old town site and hike Shoot Bay Trail again. 
Perhaps this time I will make it all 12 miles to Shoop Glacier. By the time I get to this last site, I will have traveled thousands of miles and interacted with many of the cultures we've discussed in class. Reflecting on this journey through the regions, it becomes more and more apparent that the great variety of landscapes and cultures in the U.S. and Canada makes North America a very unique place to live. I can't imagine what the earliest of settlers must have felt when they became the first people to make a trek like this road trip. But maybe one day I'll find out.